I'm here in Abu Dhabi on this beautiful golf course where they've built this 3D printed halfway house for golfers to be able to rest, grab a drink. They 3D printed it entirely at the B6 facility in Dubai and drove it over here. So off-site construction and then assembled uh, with all these gorgeous villas that were constructed over the past four years. We're going to take a look inside, look at the printed walls, which look fantastic by the way, really tight resolution, thin layer lines, and see what we can learn about this building. We'll also get a chance to ask Mohammed, the project manager, some questions about how the project went and see what we can learn about this 3D printed building here in the United Arab Emirates. Hi, my, my name is Mohammed Al Hassan. I work with Acom, or we are the project manager for Yas Acres project with Adar. Here we were filming for the halfway house, which is 3D printed in the middle of the golf course of Yas Acres. So this building, the halfway house, consists of 78 panels. In total, of them are 3D printed. The duration for printing took 23 days, and it was done off-site in Dubai. Then we start moving them here, delivering them on, on phases. And the erection was done basically on site and with all the jointing between the panels and everything. So basically this wall here, it consists from more than one panel. So even this one, it consists of three panels and three layers. So we placed the first one, then we had to basically install mortar so they are fixed. Uh, also another interesting part of this building, other than being 3D printed, these uh, windows we have, they are called cover light windows. Basically these, they are energy saving and they, they manage to keep the temperature inside to acceptable level. And we have so much heat and sunshine coming from outside, it can maintain a good room temperature. Basically this one, it has its own access control. Uh, so you can manage its system. It's sustainable and it, have, uh, it can maintain a good room temperature and climate inside. What made your company decide to pursue 3D printing for this project? Yeah, uh, Aldar has always been like a, a leader in innovation and uh, sustainable building. This wasn't a surprise for Aldar to, to be the leader in Abu Dhabi. Here basically, this is a store. Here we'll keep some products, but also it's some kind of a server room. We have the CCTV system here, we have the ICT and telecom system, we have a standalone fire alarm system here, and yeah, uh, we have the firefighting as well. We have the HVAC system for ventilation and AC. And here we can see this, we have the distribution boards and we have the racks for the CCTV systems and ICT. And here we have the, you can maybe see the panel for these windows to Basically, you control the climate and the amount of light that goes in. Yeah. So here, this is the plant room. If you can see the walls, basically, they, are, they don't have the same finish as the 3D printed elements. Here, the reason for that, it was for the firefighting purposes. So we had to install a fireproofing system, which was a mesh and some sort of insulation for just for fire resistance purposes. That's why with the finish you will find it as, uh, like this, not like a uh, normal 3D printed. Uh, yeah. What an awesome project. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe and check out one of my other videos from the many 3D printed buildings I've visited around the world. Oftentimes I'll take out my 360 camera and record a digital 360 tour these virtual tours of many of the homes I visit around the world, including this building, are available at the link in the description on my website. It's at the limit of number of spots that can be hosted. In order to add the new tours, I'll have to delete some of the old tours, or if we get enough members, I can upgrade the number of tours that can be hosted at any given time. Either way, May and June will be your last two months to get in before a big price hike, one at the end of May and one at the end of June. Current members and new members before then will have their rates permanently locked in. In the event we don't get enough new members and I have to delete the old tours to make room for the new tours, then I'm going to do that many of them all at once and so the current tours will no longer be available. Make sure to check out the ones you like before they go away. Now, without further ado, let's hear from the person behind the design of this 3D printed building, 
a familiar face that we've had on our podcast before, Luai Curdy. My name is Luai. Uh, my role in this project, uh, I was the head architect and lead uh, 3D concrete printing specialist. Uh, for this project, we really tried to push the boundaries. It was uh, quite a difficult challenge for us, but uh, that what, uh, that's what makes us uh, motivated to push the technology forward. And one of the really uh, important aspects that we try to utilize is uh, to integrate the BIM uh, into the project itself. Uh, so, you know, from my previous experience, I really understand how important it is to uh, have a fully coordinated uh, BIM model uh, ahead of the construction phase gives you an, a clear understanding of you know, the clashes that you might have and, and, and the other problems that you might face in, in the construction project. You know, for example, because it's a prefabricated um, 3D printed uh, building, we had a lot of joints, uh, joints between the panels. It's one of the things that we also needed to think about. Uh, the joints, of course, being uh, on a horizontal uh, basis and also vertical between the panels. Uh, another aspect is the, uh, you know, from the facade of the building, we don't have any vertical uh, surfaces. That's one of the things that uh, I really wanted to utilize uh, using the technology. Uh, you have, we have uh, other kind of architectural, uh, let's say, um, features that we wanted to maintain, such as the, the lintel. Uh, as you will see in this video, uh, how we treated uh, that, that uh, uh, topic, for example where we wanted to really focus on keeping the architectural uh, you know, design and, and theme uh, quite clean and uh, straightforward. Uh, so uh, we had to come up with interesting solutions to tackle all of those issues. They certainly achieved a premium layer quality in this project. Part of that is due to the small element size and also printing off-site in a warehouse allows them to control the elements a little bit better than you can outdoors. As we've talked about from other projects, printing small elements comes with its own set of challenges versus larger elements that would have a longer layer time. This building is pretty cool because it leaves the printed walls exposed as an element of the interior architecture of the building. You can also see how all of the utilities are integrated. The white roof should help bounce off some of the hot Middle Eastern sun. It's easy to tell from this angle where one element ends and the next begins. You can start to think about the level of modularization and customization that could be applied to each home. The rest of these homes in the community are also very nice, but they're not unique like this one. Granted, this is not a home. It's more of a halfway stop at a golf course in Abu Dhabi so that the players can have a place to take a leak, grab a drink, and have some air conditioning on the ninth hole. 